Q&A event. My name is Anamari Fanthorpe and I will be your host. And today we have Joe Carter here with us from Ironclad Pan. Hi, Joe. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about his e-commerce success story. So uh, if you're not familiar with his brand, you will find out lots about it today. Uh, we're going to delve into how he's taking his business from start to where he's at right now and learn some tips and tricks and get into some of the digital tools that he uses to run his successful business. Now, now, as a little reminder, if you're streaming with us on our social media platforms, which I know a lot of you like to do, make sure that you're dropping your comments or questions for Joe in the chat functions, comment sections. Um, I'll be pulling them from those platforms into this session so you can get your question answered by this SME, this small to medium business owner, just like yourself. So this is a great opportunity to chat with somebody who has been where you're at and um, can help you to get to where you need to go. Uh, so this is a little bit of a different style of a, of a session today, Joe. Thanks so much for deciding to do Digital Boost with us. Thank you so much for inviting us on, Anna Murray. It's, um, it's great, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, me too. I actually am a big fan of ironclad pants to begin with. So this is a little bit of a, like a, a buzzy moment for me. So I guess the best place to start is to talk about how you got started on your journey. You know, what made you want to get into ironclad pants as a business? Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm Joe, I'm the co-founder of ironclad and um, I've been working in kind of the advertising and marketing industry for I don't know, best part of a decade and had a bit of a values realignment when it came to capitalism and consumerism and, you know, the crazy things in the world and the conditioning that there is. Um, and I'd been working with Levi Slavin and his wife, Kate Slavin. And Kate has two young boys who are environmentalists and um, keep asking, you know, the dandest of questions. And so Kate looked in her cupboards and saw these old kind of Teflon pans and thought, you know, why are we using these? Um, skip forward six months and we've, um, you know, worked with all sorts of different suppliers, you know, in different countries and stuff, but landed on, we would be the only ones making a cast iron skillet in New Zealand. Um, we wanted something that we could hand down for generations to come um, you know, something that was super durable, something that we backed um, and kind of, you know, the high quality and integrity of the product um, had to stand, stand the test of a, of a guarantee. Um, and yeah, we're, we're kind of proud to say that we, we did it. It was a lot of hard work. There's many, many reasons that no one else is doing it <laughs> in New Zealand. Um, and so Kate and Levi are kind of the brains behind, you know, the product and the brand and the story. And I joined them to, to help a whole bunch of creative minds actually bring their ideas to life. And um, two years in and we're, we're still going. Sorry about that. I'm just busy getting all of our live chats set up so that people can contribute throughout the session. So I can see folks tuning in. So I just want to make sure that they're not missing out. So I guess that's um, it's a great story. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, all of the challenges, because it sounds like this isn't the easiest thing to say to do here in New Zealand, as you mentioned. Tell us a little bit more about some of the challenges that you've experienced over the time you've been in business. Yeah, so we're quite fortunate in that we really believe in creative capital over financial capital. Um, so we're, you know, four or five creatively led shareholders and co-founders um, with design backgrounds or copywriting backgrounds or brand storytelling backgrounds. So we love that side of things. We then had to run a business, um, which really none of us have done properly before, which includes numbers that nobody likes which includes managing supply chain relationships which are a lot more difficult from my experience than um than i thought they might be um you know we're used to negotiating with clients at advertising agencies all the time but when you're negotiating with suppliers we're still looking for that win-win outcome the biggest the biggest challenge we face is supply um we've been really really fortunate in terms of the advocacy that we've had from you know top kiwi shifts and and influences and stuff, which has created a whole bunch of demand, but we can only make so much product every week because they're all 
hand poured and hand finished to order rather than machine or cookie cutter made. So every single pan is unique, but we can only make so many a week. So we've always been chasing our tail with um with supply. And I think a lot of people listening to this will know that when you truly make something New Zealand made rather than New Zealand designed, the cost of labor, the cost of materials, like everything is more expensive here um, than it is abroad. But you know, whilst making things to order and making things locally isn't economically savvy, it is way better for the environment and, you know, sustainability is at the heart of everything that we do. So it was worth, you know, the time and the, and the money investment. That's awesome. Like designing out waste from the beginning is the best way to move towards more of a sustainable or even beyond that, a circular kind of way of doing business. So very exciting. And we're really behind a lot of businesses that take that initiative to, um, you know, create a better future for this, for this earth, you know, that's what we've got to do. So it's a really great initiative and pillar in your business. Excited to hear about that now. So tell us a little bit more about, well, tell us a bit about some of the successes you've had. I mean, obviously we selected you for a number of reasons, but folks tuning in might not be familiar with you. So you might just share a little bit about, you know, toot your own horn a little bit. We don't mind. We want to hear about where you've been and, and, um, and celebrate your success with you. Yeah, cool. So we make the only cast iron cookware in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And it comes with a three generation guarantee, which is a hundred year replacement guarantee. It's the longest, wow. <laughs> the longest guarantee that you'll find on the planet. And we truly stick by it because we use, you know, the highest grade of recycled iron. So we're not taking any virgin materials out of the ground, but we use the highest grade and we think it's going to, it's going to outlast you and your kids and your kids' kids. Um, so that's kind of the proposition that we bring to the table in sort of March, April 2020, when we all, you know, decided to stay at home for a little while. Um, <laughs> we discovered that people had more disposable income. They started kind of changing their value set, especially around spending time with their family and cooking and the ingredients they're using. And we started thinking, well, okay, the, you know, the ingredients that you use, we're more than happy to go organic or keto or whatever it is. Um, but we're not really investing in the cookware that we use. We're still using Teflon pans, um, which, you know, leach chemicals into the soils and all the things. Um, and so we saw a massive uptick in sales and it kind of launched the business during lockdown, um, which was great. And yeah, in 2020, we did about half a million dollars of revenue. And then in 2021, did about 1.1 mil. So some decent growth. Um, we've got the 28 centimeter legacy pan and the 20 centimeter little legacy pan. Um, there's a whole bunch of design features and benefits that I won't go into. We've got a Dutch oven coming out soon, a big four and a half liter casserole pot with a lid and you flip it over. It's a bread oven. So that'd be the only one. Cool. I love but that. That. <laughs> that, came, that came purely from customer request. So, you know, we, it is literally me and Kate who are on the Instagram DMs or on the <clears throat> back end of an email. You know, we're a really small team, um, but you're talking to the co-founders. So more often than not, when something gets suggested or an improvement gets, you know, asked for, then we just, we just go out and make it. So, you know, we've made all sorts of accessory products to go with it, whether it's partnering with Victory Knives to make Santoku and pairing knives with a sheer edge handle. So it's a woolen blend handle that takes the plastic out of plastic handles or whether it's these little leather pan, uh, pan snugs, leather handles that you put on the handle of your pan. So you protect your hands whilst you're cooking with it. Um, yeah, they so do yeah, the yeah. So there's <laughs> success, there's product success. And we're, I mean, we're kind of humble about it because it's still very small fry at the moment. We've got huge ambitions for the business hoping to launch in Australia in the next couple of months and make Australian made versions of the products, which comes with its own set of challenges when you can't go to Australia. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Congratulations. Um, and to grow during a pandemic, I mean, you really kind of hit a market trend there um, with the pandemic. So that's exciting. And we love hearing people who are doing really well um, during 
considering the circumstances and um you have worked really hard and you deserve that you know like um that was it's not easy to pull everything together even if you are hitting a trend um you still have to do the work behind that to make it a success you know if nobody knows you exist you can get out there and we're going to get a little bit into some of those things on how you, people know where to find you how to find you how you run your business um, so that folks can have a listen and perhaps some of those tools they can use in their business to um, follow in your footsteps. So let's get right into that, into the nitty gritty. And you'll see me kind of dart my eyes here and there. I'm just checking the chats to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Um, so apologies for that. It's a little bit of a different driving experience for me as well. So let's talk about some of the digital tools that you use. And let's begin by talking about your website and your marketing. Marketing. So what website platform do you use and why did you choose that platform? Um, so we started out on Squarespace and it was great for what we needed at the time. Um, it didn't have the commerce feature when we first started it. So um, we just had a Shopify button that we put on a Squarespace page and it was super simple, much less design limitations with Squarespace. Um, but then, you know, as the as the business kind of grew <clears throat> and, you know, we started to receive 50 to 100 orders a day rather than one or two, um, we decided to use Shopify and we've kind of just progressed through the plans with Shopify now up to the ad advanced plan on, on Shopify. Um, and we've got, you know, a, a developer at Wild Labs who's custom coded our, our theme. So it's pretty much yeah. everything you see on the website is, is custom. And I'd say it's really worth, investing that money up front and um, creating something that you're proud of. I think there's a lot, especially if you're in the direct to consumer space, I've worked with a lot of direct to consumer brands and it's very, very cookie cutter, very, very bland, same kind of brand guidelines, tone of voice, um, imagery, website design. And so we wanted to kind of differentiate ourselves and um, yeah, create something custom from the start and Shopify yeah, it doesn't have too many limitations when it comes to that. There's always more, you know, you always want to push the platform as hard as you can. Um, yeah. They've been great. You know, what would be great, Joe, is if we could see your site while we chat about this. Yeah, cool. um, yeah if you could go ahead and share, that would be great so that folks can have a look at just what you've put together there. Yeah. Yeah, so perfect. That looks great. I'm just going to check these other spouts all right we're good okay cool yeah so um so this is your main landing page and you can see that you've got the lock sign up there so you've been like approved and um i would assume you have a google my business as well account yep, yep. and what other integrations let's start with just um marketing i guess with your site feel free to drive around or if it's too hard to talk while you drive um <laughs> that's okay as well um Maybe just give a scroll around the site. Let's go down and have a look at the way that you've set it up. So you've got your call to action button there right at the top, which is great. And um, some so of the- Our kind of strategy right at the start <clears throat> was how do we encourage other people to tell our story? Um, you know, rather than us broadcasting and being advertisers and being the thing that everybody ignores, how do we encourage other people to tell our story? And so this kind of stuff, like I see a lot of these logos on websites and think, sure you've been featured in forbes but how much did you pay for the feature this is all like editorial coverage for us because it was really important to us that other people talk about us rather than us you know saying buy our product buy our product you know we don't want to we don't want to spam you like that um and again we've been really fortunate with kind of the you know the chefs who use and sell our products so whether it's peter gordon or nadia lim or michael van der elzen um josh emmett etc they've all been incredibly supportive as we've grown, we wanted to split it up into two categories. Um, and then Felicity Morgan Ryan, who's one of our shareholders as well, she was um, trained by Peter Gordon as a chef for seven years in when she was working in London. So we've got over 100 recipes on here using our cast iron skillets. And so we just thought that was a nice flow, you know, the value prop, um, who's, who's talking about us, um, what can you buy from us, and then the recipes. And then a little thing that we've integrated recently using Ferra.ai, which is a little reviews app, is a visitor's book. 
Um, so kind of much like a Kiwi batch. Um, uh, and that is coming out weird on my screen. Sorry about the UX there, guys. Um, clearly, <laughs> clearly I built the Safari. Um, a good little, oh yeah, because you're in a different browser. Well, that's also a good little um, thing. What was the name of this uh, app that you were using here? This is Farah.ai, F-E-R-A.ai. F-E-R-A-I. Yeah, as part of the post-purchase funnel, so 90 days after they've had their cookware, we ask them a few questions and say, you know, yeah. do you want $10 off your next purchase? Leave us a review. And, you know, we've had, we only implemented that in September last year. Yeah. And have all of our reviews in here. Um, from the homepage, you know, our call to action is to get people to the shop page. We toggle this announcement bar on and off, depending on what we've got going on at the moment. It links through to a landing page where we want to basically support the hospitality industry because they've been pretty screwed over um over the last couple of years so we've got five three hundred dollar restaurant vouchers to give away with any ironclad purchase um during the month of february we really don't like discounting or free stuff or buy one get one free or whatever it is it's just everything that we're against it encourages consumerism so yeah. rather than discounting our products we try and find more value-add ways to increase increase revenue and increase sales Oh, so have you collaborated with those restaurants in order to get those vouchers or that's something that you are doing yourselves? No, so, well, so, um, yeah, we'll wait for, we'll wait to do the draw. We'll explain who's won the five, $300 vouchers. And then it's the customer's choice, which, um, okay. which restaurant they want to go to. And we'll just go out and chat to the restaurant and do some social coverage from it and all the things. Yeah, lovely. I love collaborative um, work with people who are in the same realm as you, but don't do the exact same thing as you. It's a great way to expand your reach. And um, yeah, that's awesome that you've brought that up. Amazing. And then just within the product page, um, obviously coming from a creative background, we invested pretty heavily in product photography and, you know, trying to make that as Apple-esque as it can be, if you want to say Apple. Again, we've got the reviews there we've got different payment options here with lay by we found a huge kind of uptick in conversion by supporting buy now pay later platforms and having you know the key players so i think we've got lay by and zip and afterpay on here real short kind of product description kate designed these beautiful icons in terms of where where it does work so our most commonly asked question was does it work on induction and rather than dropping it in the FAQs, which is it still as we were like, yeah, tick, it works on induction, works on gas. The only place you don't want to put it, which is a nod to our guarantee, is in a live volcano. Um, and then we go into a little bit more detail. We've got social proof here with quotes from Mike Van der Arsen and Peter Gordon. Because of all of our products are hand poured to order, um, I think a lot of people expect to have a delivery overnight, um, especially in the kind of fast paced world that we live in. Um, but because we're hand to order, we try and do it within three to 10 working days, depending on when you've ordered and when the pour is happening that week. And um, I'm just trialing at the moment, doing viewings and collection in Auckland on Fridays. Um, but as someone who's still at home waiting on a negative COVID result, those tests become a lot more difficult to manage. Um, yes. yes. And then we go through the product reviews again. Oh man, this is, it's such a beautiful site, by the way, it, it's really clean and easy to follow. And I love that you've kind of answered every one of my questions as a consumer with the way that you've, you've outlined it. Obviously there's been a lot of review on the experience, user experience here to make sure that it's flawless, which we absolutely love. Now you, because you have Shopify and they have so many integrations, let's talk about some of the integrations that you use. You mentioned Afterpay, Layby, um, um, do you have your Facebook pixel set up in here? Are you using Google, you know, analytic, like all of that kind of stuff? What have you integrated into this site? And you've got the Farah Fer AI, which I've dropped into the chat for people yeah. to check out. Yeah. Yeah, we've got um, all the Google analytics, you know, set up on the back end. So <clears throat> tag, tag manager, we use UTM parameters for, you know, all the campaigns and stuff that we use kind of all the standard Google stuff. We're a bit inexperienced when it comes to Google. Um, so we're actually just looking for some, some help 
there, but I've got a Google Data Studio that I built <clears throat> right at the start, which has all of our metrics in it. So, you know, our website metrics, our Facebook metrics, our Google metrics, Instagram metrics, TikTok metrics, et cetera. Like everything is just in one platform, which is easy for me to share with, you know, the stakeholders in the business um, and for me to report from. The Facebook pixel um, is imperative. Like yeah. it's, it's probably the best tool that we have integrated to our website, um, mainly for retargeting. Um, obviously, it's a high value purchase, you know, $250 for a cast iron skillet. A lot of people don't just, you know, spend that yeah. as an unconsidered, <clears throat> unconsidered purchase. Um, and so our retargeting layer of $5, you know, $5 a day on Facebook, but knowing, you know, who's added to cart and who, you know, who hasn't completed that cart or who's viewed this web page four times or, you know, whatever it might be. And, you know, having that pixel installed means our retargeting gets a return on ad spend of about 25 to one. So for every dollar we put in, we get $25 back and we're only spending, you know, five or 10 bucks a day on that. So the Facebook pixel has been huge. Oh yes, that's a great text. Negative guys, we're negative, which means oh, okay, great house. job, awesome. <laughs> Congratulations, you're free. <laughs> I am free. No longer a caged hen. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, the Facebook pixel has been great for that. It's also been great for like you know cold kind of prospecting and and you know using traffic ads and conversion ads and all the things on Facebook and Instagram. We do do a little bit of traditional advertising as well, so you'll find us in various. Kind of glossy publications we did a little bit about a home last year um but predominantly if we are doing advertising which is rare um we'll do paid spend normally promoting other collaborators posts rather than our own um but we'll put a little bit of paid spend behind facebook and instagram and yeah just having that pixel on there has been and having direct contact with the facebook team in australia has been great the challenge yeah. with that has been separating because we're just building the Australian website now, learning that I need to have two pixels, I need to have two Facebook ad accounts, I need to have two Shopify stores, I need to have two Clavios, I need to have two. I thought we could just do it all in one, you know, and just yeah. select multiple accounts. But yeah, it's a little bit more admin, and we're probably going to have to hire someone, which is um, which wasn't in our budget or our plan. Um, yeah. That's what happens, doesn't it, in business, isn't it? But at the same time, this is exciting, very exciting. And it uh, looks like you've hit a number of challenges and just worked your way through them. So I'm sure that that'll just be just one more thing that you tick off that you go, yeah, we accomplished that. So that'll be, that'll be really fantastic. Now, yeah. you've mentioned a number of social media tools. Um, I know you also use Google ads as well as um, as Facebook ads and Instagram. Do you have, let's talk about, let's go into the social media because we're already there. So um, as far as social media, you've mentioned Facebook, you've mentioned Instagram, and you've mentioned TikTok because TikTok is an integration now with Shopify. So it's something you can add on the same as Facebook. Um, and are there any other social media platforms that you use? Um, Facebook and Instagram is what I, what I know is what I advise other businesses on and how to set up the strategy and create for you, like contextually for your audience on there. TikTok, we're just organic. Um, so no paid advertising, but you know, seeing that your pan is nonstick gets 30,000 or 40,000 views for free. I, I don't know how TikTok works, but <laughs> we create content that's relevant for the platform and the audience rather than just, you know, taking a 15 second piece here and thinking it'll work over here. Yeah. And then we chuck all of our recipes on Pinterest as well, but God knows how Pinterest works. Um, yeah. It's actually, well, we're going to learn how Pinterest works next week as oh. Pinterest for a tool for marketing because it is actually a really untapped tool and has huge organic reach. So um, stay tuned for that next week with Tomahawk. You're also on LinkedIn. Now you don't really do, is that, why do, why have you, it's obvious why you would choose Facebook and Instagram and TikTok is just a, you know, it's so trending. Why wouldn't you be there when you can integrate it with your site? Um, but I know that you're on LinkedIn. Why have you chosen to be on that platform as well? Um, <laughs> it's a good question. I mean, I've personally 
always been on LinkedIn and built a bit of a following. So it's um, it's handy for me to be able to share company messages on there. From a company perspective, we don't really use LinkedIn all that much. Um, just a couple of kind of more business updates, I guess, that people are interested in or hiring. Um, but I mean, I I use it to connect with suppliers, with buyers looking, we do a lot of kind of corporate wholesale <clears throat> orders as well. So a whole bunch of people were buying in the hundreds of pans for their staff or stakeholders or whatever for Christmas last year. Um, and for hiring as well, you know, I'll just email people on, on LinkedIn and, and say, do you want to come and work for us instead of who you're currently working for? Or <laughs> Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, that's, that's great because, you know, a lot of people think oh, I'm in e-commerce. I don't need to be on LinkedIn. Look, it depends who your market is. It depends, you know, who you're trying to reach. LinkedIn can be a very, very valuable tool. You don't have to use it to push sales out. Like you've just mentioned, it can be an awareness piece and it can also be about that hiring and staff and, um, and just B2B kind of connections, which is really great. <laughs> There's some really loud cicadas by me. <laughs> I hope it's not messing up anything. Uh, that kind of moves us into some of our admin and admin tools because you're talking about staff. And so how many staff members do you actually have at this point? Probably not. I mean, obviously you're kind of outsourcing some, but your main crew, how much, how many people do you think you have with your, with your Team. So we have me and Kate as co-founders in Auckland. We have Kate's husband, Levi, who's a co-founder in Sydney. We have Felicity, who's a shareholder in Waiheke Island. We have our Australian country lead, Nick, who's a shareholder in Perth. We have Candice, who's our production assistant um, and helps with all the packing and fulfillment and stuff. And then we have a network of supply chain partners and then freelancers who come into the business and help us. We've also just hired, uh, made our first full-time hire, um, Liv Lewis Long, who's joining us as our head of marketing and operations. So she'll basically run the show in New Zealand and Australia. But you can imagine with all of those people all over the place, not even in the same country or in the same time zones or whatever, technologies facilitated that, um, you know, yeah. that, that communication piece really well for us. So what tools do you use with your staff um, and to do your collaborations, to do your admin, what do you find? Like, are you a Microsoft? Are you a Google a workspace? What do you use? Yeah. So internally, just because we've got, or even externally for meetings and stuff, just because we're set up with Gmail, we use Google Meet because it's so simple to just create a calendar invite and the link's already there in the invite. Um, so there's no one asking five minutes before the meeting, where's the link? Where's the link? It's, it's in the invite. It's always in the invite. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, you know, we'll use um, kind of WeTransfer for file transfer, um, which is great when we want to review stuff in the WeTransfer portal as well. So if we've got, for example, last week we had some product photos taken for a couple of new products that we're launching and we had 600 raw photos that we needed to review. So we review those in the portal on WeTransfer. And just, really? I didn't even know. I only think of WeTransfer as banking. So this is, it's almost like a Dropbox as well. You're thinking of TransferWise. Ah, oh. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> yeah, WeTransfer is very similar to, to Dropbox. It's a file sharing platform. Okay. Yes, I was thinking of TransferWise. Okay, that makes complete sense now. <laughs> Um, I know that you use, uh, you, so you use your Google, you use your WeTransfer, um, and I have on my list that you use Trello as well. So um, do you use Trello, Trello, Trello for yourself, or is that something that you're using to see across your team and the workflow that they have? Yeah, so we use Trello predominantly for product development, just because there's so many moving parts, and then like the launch kind of marketing plan around those products as well. We very, we're not very good at using it because we're kind of post-it people <laughs> which yep. which works for some but doesn't work when you've got people you know dotted all around the place yeah. um <laughs> so if we don't use you know we're trying to start using Trello a lot more because it's good to organize our thoughts and kind of um organize ourselves around something that everyone can see but otherwise we'll use google sheets or google slides or google docs and that's how we share all of our information and IP and people can edit and comment and whatever on those. Um, 
Google Jamboard would be cool too. If you haven't checked it, if you haven't checked out Google Jamboard, Google, oh, yeah. Jam, Google Jamboard is it's basically almost like a whiteboard where you can write things on it or you can put post-it notes on it and you can move them from side to side. It's a it's a real like creative kind of space that you can be with at a team um in a you know a cloud tool. So that's if you oh. wanted to stick with all your Google. We personally use Trello and we actually just did a session with a specialist on Trello and how to use it more efficiently. Um, it has some really cool features. And I know that right now our team is experimenting with the pro series um, to see the value. And it'll even give you like some really great visuals of where the team is and how much workload they have. So you can, you can understand if they have capacity to, to take on more work or if they're just totally slammed. So there's some really cool, cool features there. So if you're listening to this folks and you want to learn more about Trello, you can check out that session we did with Hannah at Simpler Workflows. Um, and she's going to be talking about how to use Trello as a CRM um, in the next session. So that's interesting for us. You use for your email marketing, Clavio. Is there a reason why you picked that platform or? I spent a really long time looking at what email platform to use because, um, you know, we get 70 to 80% open rates and it's our highest converting marketing channel and it costs us, you know, it costs us the monthly subscription, right? It costs us nothing to send an email out. Um, we're not very aggressive with our emails. So I wanted something that, you know, was kind of customizable um and still had that level of complexity that other platforms don't have and Clavio kind of ticked all the boxes I particularly like the flows that you can create within Clavio you know we have all of these different flows based on where you are in the world or how much you've spent or whatever it might be um and then being able to run campaigns on there as well being able to push out out of stock notification or back in stock notifications through Clavio um, being able to, you know, segment our customers all sounds like real basic stuff that anything can do. I think we just found Clavio pretty simple to use. Well, um, just so that you got, if you guys didn't hear that about the open rate, like 70%, um, returning customers, maintaining customers that you have getting new customers or building your leads. This is one of the most effective ways. And we talk about it all the time on digital boost of using email marketing. Um, that's where most of your business grows through email marketing, you know, it's, um, and you can maintain your business through email marketing. So this is just another one of those, like, I love it because it's a testimonial that backs what we've been saying for so long that it's such an important aspect of your business. And to move on to the most important aspect of your business, let's move to finance because, <laughs> you know, businesses don't run unless they're really making money most of the time. So um, as our final kind of aspect of looking at your business and your success, what tools do you use uh, for your financial kind of ask, um, area? Yeah, cool. So that's kind of my main job as the managing director is to make sure that we still have money in the bank to keep doing what we love, basically. Yeah, you know we we do a bit of consultancy on the side as well to pay the bills because co-founder salaries aren't very high these days. Um, but we, I have a Google Sheet which just has everything in it. So I've got balance sheet, I've got revenue forecast for the next five years, I've got ten-year cash flow forecast, I've got all of that set up, and I can check daily, weekly, monthly how we're stacking up against everything. For me, I'm a bit OCD when it comes to the numbers, so I like to see, you know how much we've made in a particular month versus how much we've spent on inventory, non-inventory, overheads, expenses, and looking at gross profit, gross profit, net profit, et cetera. Because they're useful KPIs for me to share with everyone at the end of the month and to see if we're on track. Um, alternatively, <laughs> we are just shifting from QuickBooks to Xero. Um, so Xero integrates beautifully with um, Shopify. So we've got all of our inventory on the back end of Shopify, uh, back end of Zero is connected to Shopify. All of our customer details are in Zero. We can really quickly create purchase orders and send them out to suppliers. We can create invoices and send them out to one of the 35 retailers that stock our pans. Um, we can, yeah, I mean, sky's the limit when it comes to Zero. It's, it's been really good. It helps with reconciling bank statements. We're just about we've got five days to do our GST return. So we're going to do our yeah. GST return 
through zero. You that's know. next on the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Zero is so great. We've, you know, we've been lucky to have zero on a number of times here on Digital Boost, and um, they really support small businesses here in Aotearoa, uh, even with their mental health. And we love that about zero that they really do care and they do integrate well. And there's a lot of accountants out there that are specifically geared towards zero. They love zero because it's not a shoebox full of receipts. Um, and there is the reconciliation aspect of that. And the, I didn't, a lot of folks that I know that use zero, they use other inventory systems like unleashed or sin seven or things like that on the back end of zero, but it looks like you use that as your inventory system. So that's interesting. We just don't have that many SKUs. I think the other platforms are built for businesses with a huge kind of product range or a marketplace type oh, thing. Right. That would make sense. Whereas yeah. we've got, maybe 15 or 20 SKUs. So it's kind of simple for us to manage. The bit that I struggle with is you've got inventory and you've got non-inventory. So you've got the pan, right? But then you've got yep. the bag and the box and the oil and you know everything that comes right. with it. If anyone's got a way of measuring or tracking non-inventory for small businesses, <laughs> um, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe one of those, you know, some of those tools would do something like that. Do you use anything like Go Sweet Spot for your shipping? So we've just got New Zealand Post um, at the moment integrated with Starship it through the website. So yeah, as soon as an order comes through, pushes it through to eShip, which is New Zealand Post's platform. And last week I went shopping and bought a thermal printer. So this is this is big news. This is exciting. Because previously we'd been spending, we'd been downloading every single shipping label individually, formatting it in InDesign into a four page sheet with four different labels on it. And then yeah. manually printing that. You can imagine the time. It's a lot, it's, it adds up, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we just go bulk print and it goes. Fantastic, look, you know, as you get older, the things that get exciting really change, don't they? <laughs> Um, success you know when you've got a thermal printer that's, that's it you've made it <laughs> take note of that folks then you know you've made it fantastic um that's exciting you mentioned adobe illustrator what did you say adobe maybe uh, illustrator uh, i know you use creative cloud so you use a yeah. lot of those tools yeah we lose we use pretty much everything in the adobe creative suite um so whether it's Premiere Pro for creating video content, After Effects for helping to create that video content, um, we'll use Photoshop and Lightroom for all the obvious reasons. We use InDesign. Yeah. Yeah. Every did you teach yourselves how to use that or did, have you always been interested in that and that's something that you... So I've taught myself how to use it. Kate, yeah. Kate is a graphic designer, internationally awarded graphic designer with 25 years experience. So it's her bread and butter. She's great in that yeah. space. And Levi, yeah, again, he's a chief creative officer at an advertising agency, so he's super familiar with that suite of products. Felicity, mm -hmm. who's our chef and recipe creator, is also a film director by trade, so yeah. she knows. She knows. We've got creative. lots of creatives, obviously. Yeah, awesome. And if somebody's looking for creatives, you can always check out sites like Fiverr. That's f i v e double -R, -R, um, dot com, and I think dot com, and they will. You can kind of hire freelancers around around the world through there that's like one site you could use if you need help with some of that stuff you can always contact us at support at digitalboost.co.nz we're happy to help direct you on how to outsource some th some things in your business you don't have to be an expert at everything right um you know that's one of the things that we have to remember that you if small businesses you end up being the wearing so many hats you know it can be quite stressful so um, just remember that there's help out there for you. And before we finish up, um, I just wanted to mention a tool on your site. Do you, um, when you mentioned you had how many locations that stock your pans? 35? About 35 retailers in New Zealand. Yep. Yeah. Do you have like a um, kind of like a store locator on your site at all? Or how do people find out about that? We hide it. <laughs> kind oh, of okay. <laughs> you go, you go into the products and in the delivery and payment details it says here's 20 plus members of the ironclad extended family and you click yeah. into that and you can see in the north island and south island and in australia who our retailers are um and then we also that a strategic kind of thing that you do is that um 
Yes and no. Um, I just haven't got around to making a stockist tab in the footer of our yeah. website. We're 85% of our revenue comes direct to consumer and 15% wholesale. In Australia, it will be about 50-50. Yeah. Uh, the nature of the market but because everything's so expensive to make in new zealand our margins are tight as they are that's right you don't really want to have to go and put a whole bunch of stock in somewhere where it might you know just sit for a long time mm, that makes sense we're super grateful to those retailers for partnering with them and you know we're stoked that you know it's a win-win we've worked on win-wins for for all of us and all of the loyalty programs as well you know the the flybys and the airpoints and all of those guys that stock our products um we just can't we don't we make 10 15 bucks a unit like doing that you know we don't make yeah not commercially viable it's a great we see it as an investment in brand those yeah. retail experiences yeah yeah cool i do want to mention for folks that are not in the same situation because this is a really expensive product to make you make it per order it's a very different beast but because we're talking about e-commerce and we're talking about people who might be selling and making baby clothes or they might be like you know um crystal procurers, or I don't know what you do. You know, you could do a number of different things. You could be potters. There is an app that you can integrate called Community Box. And Community Box, you get up to 25 um, retailers or what, whatever you want to use it for. You can use it for testimonials. You can use it for retailers. You can use it for members. Um, and it integrates with the website. And what it does is it actually creates a map on your page. And so every single retailer in this situation would have have a little blurb below it with their branding, um, their address, and then the map above the the um, the top of the list uh, has the location of it where it is on the map. So it's a great way if you are an e-commerce business that has lots of locations throughout Auckland or throughout Aotearoa or wherever you are, um, you can pop them all on the map, and then that gives some backlinks to your site, which provides more SEO for you and, um, and for them. And it also gives that visibility for your customers so that they can find you a lot easier. We're actually gonna have community box on later this year. It's a cool toe um, and it's free up to 25 of those. So that'd be great. So to finish off, Joe, I always like to finish off these beautiful sessions with just asking you for a little bit of advice for those of us just getting started or have been in the game for a while, it doesn't have to be about business. It could be just life in general or advice that's been passed to you that you found really resonated and pulled you through. Let me um, let me know what you what that advice is and share it with the world. Yeah, cool. I think like most people, you know, there's so many times in my life where I've been down in the dumps felt like I've hit rock bottom, felt like I can't go on, whether it's in business, whether it's personal life, you know, you lose that kind of motivation and, and keeping for me, like just keeping things in the day um, has been super important and realizing kind of realizing resilience um, and learning more about resilience and how to just keep going, but also being able to accept when things are kind of out of my control. Um, that's been huge for me in business and personal life. And my answer to kind of help with that is asking for help. Um, we, we, or I struggle with it um, because, you know, you were talking about it, that generalist expert kind of mindset, you know, you have to know a little about a lot and wear multiple hats, but actually an accountant can do your finances once every three months or yeah. a designer will come in and do it. Like it's, ask for help it's a real ego thing it's a real like how do I shatter my ego and think there's someone else that can help me do this and that kind of delegation and outsourcing and asking for help is a good thing not a not a weakness oh, awesome it's that trust too isn't it this is your mm. baby that you've you know you're coddling it you don't want anyone to mess it up <laughs> you know so it's a lot of a lot of trust in others but i love that what a brilliant piece of advice um to finish this session today joe thank you so much congratulations on your success and on your negative covid test result success you can leave the house now um and we just are really 
privilege and honor to have you here with us on Digital Boost. And thank you so much for giving inspiration to so many businesses that are not only watching this now, but that will watch this later um, as it will sit on the site. So thank you so much and hope everyone enjoyed this session and got something out of it. Um, I'm gonna try and create a list of all the tools that he uses and we will attach it as a PDF underneath the recording on the digitalboost.co.nz site. If you look it up, you'll be able to download the links to these places uh, later today. So these sites, these tools. Uh, so thank you again, Joe. Thank your whole team for taking time out of your busy day because obviously, you know, as a small business, time is a commodity and we appreciate that. So have a wonderful day and we wish you well and continued success in your business. Thank you so much. The pleasure was all mine.